this? Don't see many of them about seafoam and green. Is it a colour? No, this is not a 90s episode of Top Gear. You're not about to see Jeremy Clarkson with more hair and less wrinkles. What you're seeing here is me driving my 20-year-old pride and joy through beautiful Cheshire for a car show. After many miles and a lot of pre-price drop unleaded, my wallet's lighter and I'm thinking, why do I do it? How do you spend your weekends during the spring and summer months? You might be down at the park eating a picnic sitting in the nearest beer garden, soaking in the rays, or testing out your new barbecue in the back garden. In recent years, I've noticed more young people realizing that the classic car scene doesn't have to wait until a midlife crisis. This is my view of a world in which people are fascinated by cars, lorries, bikes, and anything else that has wheels. I sometimes hear people saying, a car's to get from A to B, isn't it? A tool that takes you to work or around the corner to buy a kebab. Well, that's clearly not the case for many. And while exploring the shows, I wanted to find out what makes them spend all that time and money. What's the drive behind what they do? started when I was a young kid, restoring push bikes. And it's gone on to things like this all through my life. But also, I've been a mechanic from being 16, working for a main dealer. So I've got obviously a wealth of experience on modern cars as well. Would you ever think of selling this car? No. Uh, originally, for a sort of bangers a couple of years ago, got an idea of a friend who photoshopped a probe, uh, some Lightning McQueen, and we got the idea from there and made the real thing. First time round, it was only a couple of months work really, because basically it was just the graphics and everything. Uh, this time round, we, we say we suited the engine up now and made it a lot lighter. It took a, a while to do this bit. We always raise money for Starlight Children's Foundation. Yeah, this is for the enjoyment of it. Yeah, it's good fun and the knowledge of the cars. Yeah, mainly the atmosphere and the friends you build. Yeah, I've always been into 50s cars. I've been to the music. I used to be a teddy boy. I like 50s American cars. It's just like going to car shows. I like the tension it gets. It makes people happy. It's to show so many people see a finished car and see all the shiny bits. They don't see all the things that have gone on underneath the car. All the all the things you need to do to bolt that panel on, what you have to do to create that panel in the first place. Um, I think one, one of the great things about classic cars is A, they look good, with many different types to consider, and, and uh, the value of it is enormous if somebody can do some work on the car. I mean, my, I bought a Maserati for myself in 1954, it cost me three and a half thousand pounds. Of course, car shows do not rely entirely on the vehicles. Many are huge scale operations requiring weeks, if not months, of planning. I spoke to some of the key figures about the events that keep them busy. We had about 1,200 Fords, all, all different models and, and ages, um, with their owners bringing their cars to put on display in the grounds of the Motor Museum. Today, a very special day, where we've attempted to break the world record for the longest line of toy cars. We're nearly at the end of the counting now, we've got official counters in. At least 20,000 plus cars, which is well over the current record of 14,000. Everybody's knowledge is pulled together. Somebody who may not fix you know, the cars regularly may have come across a problem and know what the solution was. So that's fantastic um, to keep the car on the road. And obviously you've got uh, the other side of things is the social side. So you come to events like this where everybody gets, gets together and has a good time. And um, that's great. Well, this started um, 14 years ago in 2000, was our first one that we organised. And that year we got about 100 cars. This year we've got over 300 entered here. Um, we spend you know, the winter repairing them or restoring them and so on. And then they want to come out and, and show them to the public and also have a run out in them. And this event is free for people to enter and it's also free for the public to, to come and visit. It brings a lot of people, we think three or four thousand people into the village, which apart from giving to our collection buckets, they go and eat and drink in the pubs and the shops and so on. Um, so it brings business into the local community and everybody, everybody seems to enjoy it. And
refer to Europe's largest Ford Festival, um, whether you own an Escort, an Orion, a Sierra, a Cortina, or a Focus, or indeed any Ford that's ever existed, there'll be an owner's club here, and there'll be some of the finest examples of that car ever here, all at Silverstone. It's a love, isn't it? It's a passion, it's a hobby, it's just, it's, it's being part of something, it's meeting like-minded people, um, and when you look at some of the cars that are here, it's creating something that's, that's awesome. I think for the visitors, there's a lot going on. It's interesting to see into a world like this. Obviously, things like the Paul Swift stunt show that we just done here in a live action arena are quite exciting. It's not often you get to see cars doing the stunts that we've just seen. Um, and it's a chance for the owners to come and meet other owners. And also, you can buy bits and pieces for your cars. You can find spares and thrift bits and things to make your car look nice. And it's, a great, it's a great place for knowledge for owners as well. The term classic car, it's always been a bit subjective, in my opinion. Who decides what's classic and what is scrap? Well, a group known as Auto Shite shakes things up a bit. Being young is not a problem when it comes to their vehicles because neither is the cost. To maintain that almost underground element, I met one of them at a motorway service station in a darkened car. It's about a celebration of the mundane. The cars that people didn't love. This car cost me less than a set of brake pads front and rear. Autoshite regulars get a kick out of taking their cars, however boring they are, to shows, but with cars that perhaps aren't washed. Another group who are breaking the stereotype are Young Guns Classics, helping to build the next generation of classic and vintage car owners. I spoke to Richard, he owns an Austin Maestro amongst a few other things, and that Maestro, that's the car I remember from my childhood. I think it's pretty rare, so I just save one. Uh, and, uh, Ordinary cars like this are nostalgic for a lot of people. You know, it's the cars they remember from their childhood. Yeah, I think they're about four and a half thousand euros. I've not spent anywhere near that amount of it, but I've spent a lot more on it. This the first car I ever travelled in, going home from the hospital uh, when I was born, was, was an ice cream. It's not all about staring at cars. At one particular show, my better half encouraged me to put my name in a hat as such. I won, and the prize was a ride in this. <laughs> With a partner who, let's say, isn't the world's biggest car enthusiast, but she does get dragged around quite a lot, which I appreciate, by the way, I quickly noticed that location is often key at car shows. At some shows, the car exhibits are simply one of many elements. It doesn't matter whether you like talking about valves and cylinders or just like any vehicle in green. When you gather the most enthusiastic vehicle owners and mix them in with the general public, there's something for everybody to enjoy. The Great British Car Show is a great British tradition, and when the cars come out to play, well, there's nothing quite like it. <laughs>